Hello and welcome back. This is the professor of Daniel Fritz Mathematics. And today we're going to talk about finding the values using the complementary angle theorem. Now, let's speak about some general specifics here of this. Two acute angles are complementary if the sum of their angles are 90 degrees because of the sum of any triangle is 180 degrees. Now, let's look at this triangle here, this typical right triangle that it is. Okay? So, as we see the right triangle, we notice what? We got angle A and angle B expressed here. Now, we also have still the sides, which is B. This is uh, B, side A, and also side C, which is always understood as the long side, the hypotenuse. Now, we need to talk about some basic principles here because we have two angles that are shown here, so I don't want to confuse anybody uh, out here in uh, TV land. Uh, and I want everybody to understand what's going on here, so I'm going I'm to be very detailed with this. As we look at angle A on this side, we see that from here, angle A, that this side here will be considered adjacent to A. You see this, right? And then as you come over here on this side, this, is, this side will be the opposite side to, to A there, that angle, to A. You see that? Now when we come back here and look at this angle B, B here, this side will be opposite of this angle B right here. And also, this side, of course, will be adjacent to the angle B right here, respectfully. So again, you have the B side, side B, side A, and the longest side, which is hypotenuse. Now, if you will, look at the notations of the trigonometric functions here. According to this triangle, we base the trigonometric functions here displaying its information as, as it does respectfully. So based on what I basically said here, explaining the triangle here, this is a great picture and perspective of what was being discussed here at this triangle. Now, we got to understand when we're dealing with complementary angle theorems that we're dealing with co-functions. And, and sine, cosine, tangent, and cotangent, secant and cosecant are co-functions of one another. And complementary uh, angle theorem, co-functions of, uh, co of complementary are equal. So let's look at this over here. We just uh, repeated, I repeated that just a second ago, what uh, sine and cosine, tan, cotan, and secant and cosecant. Now let's look at this, the, the angles as such. Sine 30 degrees is equal to cosine 60 degrees. Tan 40 degrees is equal to cotan 50 degrees. And also, also uh, secant uh, 80 degrees is equal to cosecant 10 degrees. We see that, right? And so if you look at the chart, the chart is in degrees here, and also this side of the chart is in what? Radius. Let's do some problems. Now, what we want to do here is we want to find the code function and angles using the complementary angle theorem. Complementary theorem. Now, look at this problem here, sine of 62 degrees. We're going to use this little conversion from the chart that will be cosine 90 minus this angle here, which will be cosine you see, cosine 28. So this is not only the co-function of, uh, uh, co of each other, but it's also the, uh, it's also the uh, complementary angle of each other also as well. You see that. If you take and add these two t 
together, of course, it will make this, well, 62 plus 28 will give you 90 degrees. You see that, right? Let's look at tan. Tan pi, tangent pi over, uh, pi over 12. Again, use that second side of the chart there with, the, uh, with radians. You take the uh, co-function of that, f minus the theta, whatever theta is. In this case, it'll be pi over 12. Now, look how I do this. I come up with cotangent uh, 5 pi over 12. Now, let me show you how I, ha how, how I got that solution. Because I know some of you are, are you know, questioning the, the, the way of uh, of adding and subtracting whatever uh, fraction. So, and then we got a uh, constant here. We have uh, a constant function here. So basically, this pi can throw a lot of people off. So I just want to show you here. You got pi over 2 minus pi over 12. Again, we want to find what? Common denominators here. You see that? And our common denominator will be 12, right? So 2 and the 12 goes what? 6 times, and 6 times pi will be 6 pi, right? So you rename, rename it a fraction. How about this? 12 goes into 12 one time, and then 1 times negative pi is negative pi. So here we rename the fractions. We got our common denominator, so all we have to do is what? Subtract, effectively. So 6 pi minus uh, pi will be 5 pi over 12. And this is how we had got this solution here. We see that. Of course, cosine pi over 4. So you take the uh, co-function conversion, which is, you know, sine pi over 2 minus some angle theta. In this case, it's going to be pi over 4. So here, what we'll have here for the answer, after doing our work over to the side of finding the common denominator, and then subtracting the fraction, getting pi over 4, we have sine pi over 4 as our answer. You see that? Cosecant, cosecant pi over 6. Same thing. We get the conversion, the, co, the cofactor conversion which is uh, secant pi over 2 minus, uh, minus some angle theta. In this case, it's pi over 6. So pi over 2 minus pi over 6, right, will be what? Secant pi over 3. And this is based on the work that's being shown here. If my camera person gets this, uh, just get a shot of this here, this is how we show our work here for all uh, well, pretty much for all three of these uh, uh, problems here. And this was basically straightforward and self-explanatory. Now, let's go over here and talk about finding the exact value of each expression using the complementary theorem. Now, secant uh, 28 degrees minus cosecant 62 degrees. Still, you want to use those co-function co, uh, co conversions there. And as you see right here, you can use any one of these. You can convert any one of these. You can convert this to be cosecant, or you convert this to, convert this to be secant, right? Of course, and I'll show you that. If we use this here and convert this to cosecant, 90 minus some angle theta, in this case, which is 28 degrees, 90 minus 28 would be what? Cosecant uh, 62. So in this case, you bring that down, you also bring this minus what? Cosecant 62. Now, cosecant 62 minus uh, cosecant 62 will give you a result of zero. And what I did was I drew like a, an arrow. That's a, this is an arrow. One of my students one time actually said, and I'll share this for a second, they said, what is that? So they, didn't, they thought it was some sort of mathematical symbol that I, that I made up, but it wasn't. This is, this is surely an arrow, so I just want to make sure everybody out there understands that. Let's try this, uh, let's try this problem in another way, right? Let's try the problem in another way. 
secant 28 degrees minus cosecant 62. So now it converts cosecant, excuse me, to secant. So converting that 90 minus 90 degrees minus some angle theta, in this case 62 degrees. And so what I do now, I'm going to bring this down and of course uh, subtract. This is going to become secant what? Uh, 28 degrees. So secant 28 minus secant 28 is still what? Zero. We see that. Now, let's try one more. As we see, sine 35 degrees divided by cosine 35 degrees. But what we want to do is we want to get, well basically we want to convert this so we'll have an easier simplification of a, of a result here. So we have sine 35, and we convert that to what? Cosine 90 degrees minus 35 degrees, which is going to give me cosine 55 degrees. So we already have cosine 55 degrees in the denominator. So cosine 55 degrees divided by cosine 55 degrees will give you a result of 1. This concludes talking about complementary, uh, using the complementary theorem, right, and finding those values and its cofactors. If you have questions, be sure to get in touch with me. And I hope everybody has a, a blessed evening.